Aren't you thankful? I am so, so thankful that I get to serve a God who is more than enough, right? We serve a God who is the great I am. And what does that mean? It means that he is everything that we need at every moment of our lives. No matter what it is, God is the answer. He is the source. He is a provision. He is our peace. He is our purpose. He is our healing. He is everything that we can ever ask for. Amen. Let's thank our worship team for the amazing job they do. Leading us into the presence of God. One moment in the presence of God can change everything. Amen? You can go from, from here to here. Your faith can go from down here to way up here in the one moment in the presence of God. So, hello. Good afternoon or good morning. My name is Jenny Castaneda. And my husband, Albert, and I, we are the new uh, Gateway Phoenix campus pastors. And we are, we are so excited for all that God is doing. I am going to spend about 10 minutes giving you an update on what's happened, what's been happening in this past year. A lot has happened. And then after that, my husband will come up, and he's going to um, just share an amazing message that got put on his heart. It's going to be powerful. Be ready. It's, it was good for a service. So we're excited about that. So one of the things that we always get asked from so many people is, why Arizona? It's hot. We know it's hot. And you know what the simple answer is? Because God said, right? That's the simple answer. And I could say that. But I want to give you guys a little bit more heart behind the why. And we didn't just pick Arizona just on a map. And we didn't pick it because it's a lower cost of living. No. We chose it because God began doing a work in our hearts several years ago. We would visit Arizona regularly to visit my husband's brother and his family. And every time we went, we just liked that city more and more. We never thought we would ever move there, but we just really enjoyed our time there. And um, little by little, God began to give us eyes to see what he needed us to see in that city. He began to show us people there that needed hope, that needed light, that needed encouragement. And we went this one time for a funeral, and it really just opened our eyes to a need there that God had. My husband officiated a funeral for a young, a young woman. She was, I think she was like 22. It was a tragic, a tragic um, accident that occurred. And in that, during that visit there, um, we just felt God really speaking. And we didn't think that it would be us that he would send. We just asked God to send someone because we knew that they needed a shepherd. And years later, as it goes on, as the story goes on, um, God just began to put that heart, that desire in our hearts. And I thank God that he's given us the ability to hear his voice and to sense what he's saying, to sense what he's doing um, today in 2018. He's doing so much around us, and to give us those eyes to see is so important. And God has been doing a work in people here in California, giving them the same heart for what he wants to do in Arizona. He's giving people, even in Arizona, a heart to come on board and help us to do this amazing thing that God wants to do. And we have a team already that's coming with us from California, and we have right now currently 26 six people on our launch team, and I will show you a picture of them. This is our team. Give it up for our team. They have been praying and fasting, and they've heard God, and they have made the commitment to uproot their lives from beautiful California to go to Arizona, which is also beautiful, I must say, and um, just to do what God, just to do the work that God has called all of us to do. But there is um, a verse that I want to read to you, which kind of sums up why we're going. It's in John 10, 10. It says this. It says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Our heart is that we would bring a life-giving message to people who need hope. The enemy is doing a job around us. We see so many broken people all the time, but we have an answer that is so wonderful and so amazing, and we want to share that light to people in Arizona. Um, I believe this, that, that God wants to go in Arizona, and he wants to heal people spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, 
relationally, financially, that God wants to do a work in that city, in that, in that region, and we're, we're thankful that we get to be on board with that. So our team is amazing. I want to talk about a few milestones and wins that we've um, been experiencing. It's been a very busy year. But before that, I want to just give a shout out to you guys because we feel so supported and so covered and so encouraged. And I just want to thank you for just taking a moment to just stop and say, we're for you, we're with you, we believe in you. Every word does so much to us and it helps our team to move forward into what God is doing. So we want to thank you guys. We want to thank our, our lead pastors, Pastor David and Kathy, for all they're pouring into this, our executive team and the staff and everyone. We feel so covered and so supported. So thank you guys so much. Uh, a big win would be this. Uh, as a church in four cities, the pledges that came in for this campus totaled over $250,000. That's a lot. That's a seed that's being planted in a, in a new city. Most of the pledge money has already come in, and we want to just thank you guys for commitment to those outstanding pledges that are still going to be coming in as, as, God, as God leads. Another big win is this. Okay, so, so we, um, we're, in the, we're in the whole process of like budgeting and, and looking at everything that we need, resources and equipment and everything, and we know that, that there was a possibility we would be a portable church, meaning we don't have our own physical building, but we have to go and set up in a building every week and tear down. Well, when you do that, you have to have certain equipment that's much more durable than something that you can just place, you know, somewhere permanently because we have to move it every week in and out of a building. And so we started researching, my husband was researching portable equipment. <clears throat> and we budgeted about, you know, in, initially we budgeted about $60,000 for all the portable equipment, which is like the sound and kids and coffee carts and everything. Well, as my husband was researching, we realized that we were off a bit. Um, he was calling some companies that specialize in that service. It's called Church in a Box, things like that. And what we found out was that we were off by about, we, it, sh it would have been about 120,000, not 60,000. And so we're like, oh Lord, okay. So my husband's like, okay, how am I gonna go to Pastor David and tell him that we were off by this much money? What am I gonna do? So we're kind of just, okay, we'll just pray, and give it to God, it's all gonna work out. Well, the following Saturday, we get a phone call early in the morning from Pastor. And he says, hey, he's like, guess what? We're like, what? I said, I have some great news for you. We're like, yeah. And he's like, we just, um, been, we've just been um, given a resource of portable equipment. A church is letting us use their equipment. They're not using it right now. And um, you guys can, are free to use it for the Phoenix campus. It's a 26-foot trailer, and it has $120,000 worth of equipment in it. So basically, basically it's like God said, here you go. Here you go. It's like right there. God is a good God. <clears throat> How many know that some stress came down? Some stress levels lowered a little bit. So that's a big win for us as a church. Amen? The other thing is this. Um, we knew from the very beginning as we started talking about a campus plant, we were going to be um, applying for an organization called ARC, which is the Association of Related Churches. They're an organization that helps church planters launch well, launch successfully. They, um, they resource church planters. They provide training. They provide coaching and one of the really good benefits is there's a, they provide a network of other pastors in your region. So in Phoenix are other pastors that we can partner with to see that area come to know Jesus. So we never do have to do ministry alone. We wouldn't anyways because we have Gateway, but having that support there is super amazing. So we've gone through the application process. We started in November. It's a very lengthy process, and I just want to praise God because we got accepted in March of 2018 to be a ARC campus plant. <clears throat> They've planted over 600 churches, and 93% of those churches, after five years of launch, are still thriving and growing. They, um, they know what they're doing. We're honored to be a part of the ARC organization. 
So we've completed all of our training, a lot of online training with them. We've gone to a three-day intensive, and we started our coaching sessions with the coach that wanted a church in Texas. So it's been really good. Okay, so another milestone. We um, have been going back and forth to Arizona during this whole year for a week every month, just um, starting to build and do work there, looking for locations, looking for buildings. We knew that um, because ARC let us know that finding a venue would be our, our hardest hurdle. It's not easy to find a place to have a church. It's not, the enemy doesn't want it, but it's just, there's a lot of things we have to get through to get a location. So we started looking at buildings. We found, a, we got a, referred to a really awesome realtor that had a heart to see the kingdom grow. He took us to many, many, we've seen probably 30 buildings. Pastor, Kip, Chip, Pastor Chip flew in and he helped us look at buildings. And there was this one day where we were like looking at all these properties and we were so exhausted. We we're like, ugh. Another thing was really working because we wanted to find a place where families would feel comfortable bringing their children. And um, just not a random place, but somewhere where it felt safe and it felt clean and where I would want to bring my family to. And so we were just tired. We're like, okay, this is not going to work. And we're driving home after this long um, tour. And we go down, we go down a, one of the streets that we don't normally go down. And as we're driving down that street, we see on the, on the right side, there's this event center. And we're like, oh, what's that? That's interesting. And, um, and Chip's like, let's turn around and go look at it. So we turned around, we drove in, and we said, let's just ask. Let's check it out. What do they offer? So we walk into this building. We meet the general manager. And we said, hey, um, do you guys rent out your property? She goes, yeah. What are you guys looking, looking to do? And we said, well, we're a church. And we're looking to rent a facility every Sunday. She goes, you're a church? We said, yeah. She said, do you know that I've been looking for churches? She said, my boss just asked me to find a church or churches to rent our facility on Sunday. And I thought, how in the heck am I going to find a church that needs to rent a building on a Sunday? And here we come and walk in. And God gave us amazing favor. Again, here you go. The favor of God has been amazing. So I want to show you this building that God placed in Gateway's hands. It's coming. There's going to be a video. <laughs> it's called the Falls Event Center, and it's in Gilbert, Arizona. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. We can't even imagine what God wants to do. He has to just amaze us, and he does, and he's so awesome and amazing. The awesome thing is this as well, is that this facility is on the border of Gilbert and Mesa, Arizona. Literally, it's on a street that one side is Gilbert and one side's Mesa. So we're right in the middle, and God's allowing us to reach two different communities of people in two different cities, totally different demographics, but we get, to, we get to serve both parts of this area, and God knows what he's doing. Amen? 
All right, what's next? So my husband and I and our family are moving to Arizona in two weeks, June 16th. Pray for us. This is the big move, and we're excited. Many of our team members have already gone, um, moved to Arizona, and the rest will, will move by the end of August. We're currently in the recruitment, fray, cr blah, recruitment phase of our launch, so we're just meeting people there. We've already met people there that want to be a part of this campus launch, which is amazing. Our goal is to have at least 60 people on our launch team by December. And then um, <clears throat> we'll start um, hosting interest meetings, interest nights, beginning in August, and we'll just start inviting people to hear the vision and heart of Gateway and to invite them to be a part of the team. And then um, we'll ha start our training for our launch team early November. I mean, sorry, late November, early December. And then we launch day one, Gateway Phoenix Campus on February 10th, 2019. So that's awesome. Amen. Put on your calendar. Pray for us. Okay, how you can be a part of the journey if you, would, if you would like to be a part of this journey. You already are, but if you would like to be more a part of it. If you know anyone in the Phoenix metro area, let them know about the new campus. We, wanna, we would love to meet people that maybe live in that area and just um, let them hear the heart of what Gateway is all about. And then the second thing is this, is we truly, truly need prayer partners because everything is on a foundation and foundation of prayer. We need intercession, we need prayer to be able to see what God wants to do. We're in a battle and we have to fight for what God wants to do in that area, in that region, and we believe he is gonna do it. So if you are willing and if you feel like God is leading you to do this, if you wanna be a, a prayer partner, if you can join my husband and I right here, right after service, we have a sign-up sheet. We'll just need your name and email. and We'll email you updates on what you can be praying for with us. Amen? Amen. All right, my husband's coming up. Life. Isn't Pastor Jenny the most inspiring woman you've ever met? I'll tell you, let me tell you how lucky I am. There is nobody in this world that has her beauty, her brains, her anointing, her gifting, her passion. And uh, I have some great mentors and, and coaches in my life, but nobody inspires me like Pastor Jenny. Nobody inspires me. Um, I also want to say thank you for your support, your, your generosity, your uh, every week. It's just been a continual nonstop support. You guys are sharing um, with us just words of encouragement. And like, like Pastor Jenny said, they just carry us. They, when, when it feels like we can't go on and it feels like what are we doing? Your, your encouragement, your prayers, your, your financial support, all that just carries us and, and makes us believe that we can do this. Somebody told me recently, the greatest way you can repay somebody that's invested in you is to be successful. And I'm not going to promise you success, but I'm going to promise you that we are going to give our all. We're going to give our life to building God's kingdom. One person at a time, that's what I'm going to promise you. Um, before, before I get in, I just, it's so fitting. This, this is our last time on the platform um, as residents of California. And I just want to honor a couple people. Uh, they're not even here, but I hope they're watching uh, by video. But Pastor Gary has just been an amazing pastor in our life. And he's been depositing love and support in us and in words of encouragement. And we're so, so grateful for him. When we came here 14 years ago, we connected with this, with this man, and he's been just right by our side this whole time. That hasn't skipped a beat. And even, even, even when he's in the hospital, and I'll call him to encourage him, he ends up encouraging me. I cannot encourage him. We had this special, special bond. You know how you, know how you love somebody so much? You say, hey, I, come over to my house. I want to I share my meal with you. He's got this meal. I, I don't know if you have a meal, but like your lasagna or your tacos. Like, like I want to share this with you. Well, he shared his favorite meal with us, his specialty. He made us Spam burritos. <laughs> it tastes just like it sounds. A slice of Spam in a tortilla. Nicole, I don't know like, if he's made that for a lot of people. We are privileged 
to have had his spam burritos. Um, and you know what? You know what's so fitting is this: he's he's leaving. He's he and I are riding off to the sunset about the same time. He's just going north. I'm going. We're going south. And you know how I feel, if I'm honest. If I can't have him, I don't want you all to have him. So I'm glad it's just so fitting that we get to leave at the same time. And, um, and it's such an honor to, to be under Pastor David's ministry. This man of God has just seen things and identified things in my wife and I when we didn't see them. And he's been there. And we think about our journey and our path and Without Pastor Dave, without our lead pastor uh, giving us the opportunity, we are truly living our dream today. But, but we're so thankful for the man that's given us the chance to, 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 lead our, to live our dream. When we were ordained as, as pastors here, we, had, we were ordained with some other ministers, and they, those other ministers had their parents standing with them, praying for them, laying hands on them. Well, we didn't have parents that, that could do that for us. So Pastor David and Kathy... They stood in that place, and they laid hands on us and ordained us. And we're so grateful for next week. Yeah, give it up for honor, the honor of this man. We're so grateful for next week. They're going to lay hands on, on us again, and we're off to our, our next chapter. Amen. I got to run. We got to hurry. I want to respect your guys' time today. Uh, just a short message today. The title of our sermon today is called The Connected Church. And one thing I want you to know about the connected church is a connected church changes the world. A connected church changes the world. I'm just going to share with you real quick. You know, I grew up, I grew up, I had a little rough uh, upbringing. My parents divorced when I was about six years old, and I went to live with my mom and my, and, and I kind of bounced around, and you can imagine how hard it, how hard it would be for a single mom to, to try to, resettle in, in this valley. And so we moved around quite a bit. We went with family. We, we would try to get our own place. And, and by the time I entered into the fifth grade, I had attended seven different elementary schools. So you can imagine, I'm the new kid all the time. And these elementary schools range from the heart of the east side, where it's just rough and tough, to all the way to the country of Gilroy. I used to listen to gangster rap on the east side and then Brooks and Dunn in Gilroy. <laughs> and I would bounce around and, I would, and every time I went to the school, I found myself just a little different than maybe the environment. And it would take me a, a little while to kind of adapt to that, to that group of friends or to those people or to that school and and then I would move again and then I would move again and and what I realized was I I, I ended up feeling like I don't necessarily fit anywhere that I was at. I often felt like I could never really connect with people and I was always careful and I was always guarded and I was always just a little bit more reserved and and even coming to this church here 14 years ago, we came in and we sat in that back row and we just said, this is cool, but we're not sure if we really connect here. I'm not sure we fit in this church. And then my wife started going to the small group and she went by herself because I wouldn't go. And she, she said, you need to come to the small group and there's really nice people there and, and I think you'd like it. I'm like, oh, man, we'll, we'll see, maybe. Because I, I grew up just not really wanting to, I couldn't fit. And I grew up thinking, like, I'm just going to be careful. She signed me up for this men's rally one time, this huge men's rally. And she's like, you need to go to this men's rally. There's going to be, like, tri-tip there. <laughs> like, like, we do that, right? We do these, and we do meat thinking you guys are going to come. Well, it works because if we did vegetables, <laughs> right, who, who would want to go to a men's rally and eat carrots? So I went to this men's rally, 200 men there, and everybody was, you know, connecting, and, and I just felt disconnected. I wonder if anyone in this room has ever felt disconnected. I wonder if maybe like my story, you, you've come from some, some place or somewhere, maybe life has challenged you, and because of that challenge, you feel like, like I don't really necessarily fit. 
I'm not, I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not, I'm not creative enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're not the life of the party. Maybe you don't have this outlandish personality that everybody loves and adores. And, and maybe you find yourself in environments or places and, and maybe even a church and you feel like, I don't necessarily fit. I don't necessarily can connect. You know, the disciples sometimes felt like they couldn't connect. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18 says this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elisha. And others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Let me just... Let me just jump in right here. Can you imagine being Jesus and you ask your disciples like, hey, what, what, do, you, what do you think about me? And, and, so, and they're like, well, you know, you're like Elijah or Elisha. I get them mixed up. Uh, you're, you're, like, you're like this reincarnated prophet. Like these guys walked with Jesus. These guys seen with their own eyes the miracles he did and the love and compassion. They've seen, they seen him do these things. They, they even, I'm sure they drank the wine that he turned into water. These guys know him. Water into wine. Either way. Either way they drank it, is my point, right? These guys, these guys are with him. And, and, and then to... To say, uh, you know, you're just, you're just, you're just some, well, one of these guys, and then, and then listen to what he says. He says, "But what, what, who do you? But what, who do you say, I am?" And then Peter stands up, and he answers, "You are the Messiah, Son of the Living God." And Jesus replied, "And you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you." You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Come on, does that sound like a connected church that changes the world? Can I tell you that you are part of the church that Peter built? That changes the world. The church that nothing can conquer it. Nothing can withstand it. But Peter, this is what happened to Peter. Peter was connected to God. Jesus said, but you, my father has revealed this to you, Peter. You get it. When the other disciples didn't feel connected, Peter was connected. And he stands up and he confesses who Jesus is. And when he confessed who Jesus is, Jesus proclaimed who he was. And he says, you are Peter. And on, and on this rock, I'm going to build my church and nothing Nothing is going to stop it. You know, what's interesting about this verse is this. It's not the connected church that changes the world. It's you and I connecting to the, to the world that changes the world. You and I change the world when we connect to it. It's not, the church is just where we come and gather and get inspiration. The church is where we come and get and find community of believers. The church is where we, where we come and we celebrate, but, but it, this doesn't change the world. You and I change the world when we connect to it. Three ways to connect to your world. We call them our, our bed, our buck, and our burden. Three ways, this is how we connect to our world. Number one, our bed. Our bed is where we live. This is where God has placed you and called you to your city, to your community, and even your, to your neighborhood. This is where he's, he's placed you. This is, what, this is what Acts chapter 2 says. This is the early church. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Sounds like a life group, Yeah. Breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their numbers day by day those 
who were being saved. This is about you and I opening up our lives, opening up our homes, being a part of, of where God has called you to live, he's, where he's called you to, to be around in, in your community, in your neighborhood, and he's calling us to open up our, our lives. I was with um, my friend Bill Riddle here last week. And uh, Bill Riddle, if you don't know this amazing man, uh, just recently lost his wife to cancer. And Bill retired, and we hung out this week. And I said, Bill, tell me, tell me about your week. Tell me, what do you do? And he says, well, on Mondays, I open up my home to, for a life group. And he said, and people come, and uh, people's, we, we're, people from our church, people from other churches, he said, they come, and we just, we're touching people, and we're, we're, we're inspiring people. He says, and then on Wednesdays, I go and I serve in, in reality. I drive all the way to, to San Jose, and I'm, I have a life group there with the junior high guys. And he, I open up my life, and I'm, I just coach these kids every single week. He says, on Thursday, I, I volunteer at a, at a golf course where they let me golf for free. And on Sundays, I, I come to church. I look at this week, I look at this man, I'm like, man, this guy is living the dream. This guy is doing it. He gets to golf for free. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, that's not the dream. What he's doing is he's opening his life. He's saying, with wherever God has placed him and called him, I'm going to open up my life, and I'm going to love, and I'm going to reach, and I'm going to help people change their world. Can I, can I just challenge you with something here? Can I, can I encourage you to look at where God has placed you? Look at the people that he's placed around you, and you would, be, you would just open your life, just be you, and you'll see how God is changing people. Number two, second way we connect with our world is our buck. This is where we earn our living. This is our place of employment. God has, called, God has given us a place of, a, of work, and he's maybe placed you on a team or in a, in a cubicle setting or, or an environment where, where there's people all, all around you. And these people all around you, they, they, they may be hurting or they may, be, may be just maybe have some, some issues in life, but God has placed you there. If you've prayed for your job, and, and even though it may not be the most greatest job or there may be some some issues there, but, but God has placed you there. Listen to Matthew 5, 14 says this. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise their heavenly father. Can I tell you something? There's something special about you. There's something about, about when you and I connect to the Father, there's something inside of us. There's a light inside of us. There's hope inside of us. There's joy inside of us that is attractive to somebody that may not have hope. And he's placed you there, and he's called you there. And, I, and my, my encouragement to you is that you would just let your light shine before all men before at your place of employment. Number three, our burden. Number three, our burden. Our burden is our passion. This is, this is, this is the one that you and I, we all have this passion for something. Maybe it's sports. Maybe it's, maybe it's family. Maybe, maybe there's something that God has placed inside of your heart and God wants to, God wants you to use it to bless people. Psalms 37 says this, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know what's cool about the, the burden that God has placed on your, your life? I believe that it's, it's God's burden. I believe that it's God that places something inside of you, and the burden that he places inside of you causes you to, give, to spend your t time on it, to spend your money on it, to spend your energy on it. When we came here 13 years ago, when we started working here, my wife and I were just here part-time. We had full-time jobs nearby. 
And we would, we would meet here on our lunch breaks a couple of times a week. And we would, we would pray for our youth. And that was our ministry. We would pray for our youth. And we would gather in this south side of the, the building here, which is now our youth center. And we would open up these blinds. And there was a building next door that we would stretch our hands and say, God, do something in there. This building was a juvenile mental health facility. This is where kids would come that were suicidal, that were depressed and oppressed. This is where kids would come when they were, were hurting, when they couldn't, they couldn't go to juvenile hall or, or places like that. And we would come and we would gather here with my wife and I and maybe some of our other team and we would just pray, God, send somebody. God, open the door. You love these kids. These are your kids. We pray for their health. We pray hope and we would pray for these kids. And about two years later, I'm full time here. I'm working late one, one evening and Pastor Chip calls me and he says, hey, are you available to give this group a tour. They want to tour our building because they want to work with the designer of our building. And I said, yeah, I, I'll do it. Sure. I said, who's the group? He said, it's our neighbors to the south. They want a tour. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So I go greet this group at the door and there's about 15 or 20 of them. And, and I just feel the presence of God over this time. And I just very, very, very quickly, as fast as I could, I, I said, hey, follow me. I said, let me give you a tour. I said, here's the NPR. Here's the sanctuary. Here's, here's the lobby. Here's our cafe. It's good. And here's our warehouse, I said. And, and we ended up right in the, in the youth room there. And we stopped. And this is where we stopped. And I said, can I be honest with you guys? I said, we've been praying for you. And, and I said, we've been praying for your protection. We've been praying for your, your kids there. And I just said, if there's just any, any way, any, any way we could help or serve, if, you, if we could be big brothers or big sisters, we would just love, love the chance to, to serve you guys. And, and through the crowd, this older lady walks through and she hands me her business card. And she, on her card says, president and founder of Starlight Organization. She calls over the business director and she says, whatever this guy wants, I want you to make sure he gets it. So a relationship began with Starlight. Opportunity to go love on these kids. And we would go, I would go to their debrief um, meetings where the kids would talk about their day and there was so much strife there was so much anger there was so much pain and 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 just the atmosphere was so so uh, you know I'm a, I, I've never been so scared of a of a building or facility in my life this place was dark it was cold it was eerie it was it, it was just a really really you can feel the oppression you can feel it you can feel the hopelessness they had doors just like this one here with the glass windows and, and every single door, all the windows were, were, were broken out. And I asked the staff member, I said, what, what's the deal with, with, the, with your doors? How come there's no windows? They said, well, the kids would break the window and they would eat the glass to hurt themselves. These kids were hurting. But you know, we had a burden. We had a burden. And I asked the staff member, I said, can I just ask you this crazy question? I said, would you guys come over to our facility on Wednesday nights? We have this youth gathering, and we just would love to have you guys as our guests. And, and I said, well, we're not sure. Some of these kids are dangerous, and they're, they're, they're a little rough, and, and some of them are on medication. And we just said, they'd be our guest of honor. And they said, let's just start with two. So one week, two came. Another week, two more came. And then two more, and then two more, and then two more. And then next thing you know, a few weeks later, 16 of 18 kids were coming. 
to our youth group on a regular basis. And it changed everything. We, we, we began to like love on these kids and accept them. And they were different. Believe me, they, they were different from our, from our kids. And we just loved them. And we, we created a, a small group just for them. We called it Life Hurts, God Heals. And we're talking about uh, the God of hope. And we're talking about depression and, and, and all these things. And we were changed our, our messages. We started just preaching the simple gospel that Jesus loves them so much that he died for them. And he rose from the grave so that they could have a future and one by one by one by one they started giving their life to Christ and their worlds began to change that facility began to change because we have a burden for these kids and then one day out of the blue just one day these kids were coming we were loving on them they were becoming a part of some of those kids started entering our internship program we just were loving. We were seeing the power of God. And one day, just one day, they stopped. I went next door and I looked. The building was empty, dark, completely empty. And I called one of the staff members. I said, what, what happened? She said, we're, we're done. They closed us down. They closed us down. I, I went before God and I was a little... I said, God, is this, this how it works? You open the door and then we're not done loving on these kids. We, we have more plans. We have, there's, there's two more kids that weren't coming and, and there's more staff members that we got to love and see come to Christ. And there's, what, is this it? Are we, that's, this is how it goes? And just very peacefully, very calmly that the Lord spoke to my heart and he says, you connected them to me. That's all you need it to do. Because you know what? When we're connected to him, we'll never be the same. I don't know where these kids are at today, but I know one thing for sure, that they know Jesus Christ. They met him right here in this building, and their lives, their worlds will never, ever be the same. You know something? We're not going to Phoenix to go build a church. We're not looking for the prettiest building or, or the greatest band. We're going to go to Phoenix to go build people. We're going to go and we're going to connect people to the one who changes our life. Because that's what he did in our life. What would the church look like? If we went beyond these walls and we loved like Jesus loved and we reached beyond and we connected to our cities, to our communities and even to our neighborhoods and we opened up our lives and we connected them to Jesus, what would the church look like? Can I pray for you if you can, can I ask you to bow your heads? Maybe you're here this morning and you're, maybe you feel like you can't go out to your world and connect to something that you don't feel connected to. And if that's you this morning, you're saying, you know, because of life, because of shame, because of hurts, because of sin, because of whatever, I don't feel connected. Jesus said, I came to seek and save. Romans 8 says this, that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. Maybe you feel disconnected, but I want to let you know that God is, wants to connect with you. And if you've never connected with Christ and you're here this morning, you say, I, just, I, need, I need to connect. I want to reconnect. If that's you, just lift your hand so I can pray with you. Amen. Amen. Anyone else say, I just, I just need to reconnect. I feel lost. I feel hopeless. Amen. Amen. Anyone else?
house. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, I, I thank you for, for your grace, your love, your mercy. Lord, you see not only the hands that went up, but you see the hearts that were been open to you. That the hearts that have now invited you to become their Lord and Savior, that and their world will be changed because of this decision that they've made. Lord, I pray that you would come and I pray that you would fulfill them. Give them the desires of their heart, Lord God. Use them in a mighty way. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's say thank you to Pastor Albert and Jenny. <clears throat> We're going to be praying for them. In fact, if you wanted to be a part of their prayer team, uh, they're going to be right up here afterwards here. And you, uh, let's just stand in agreement with them because we believe God's going to do something wonderful here. Just to hear their hearts and what they've done here, we know that God's going to bless them. You made a phrase. You, you, you mentioned open your hearts, open your, your heart, and your, open your life. Where's Bill, Bill Riddle? Are you here? Where's Bill? Stand up, Bill. Stand up. Let's just give this guy a shout out here this morning, guys. Thank you, Bill, for opening up your world and doing what you've done. And there's many other people here. We don't have time this morning to recognize everybody. But I tell you what, there are people here. We want to give you opportunities to open up your world. We're going to receive the offering here. We're going to worship. We're going to close out and bless everybody. But if you could throw up on the screen there that one little slide there on the giving opportunities and serving. This weekend, as we mentioned, is Team Gateway Weekend. So we have all the different ministries. In fact, we have over 65 ministries here where people can serve, people can open up their lives and be a part of the connected church like Albert was talking about. So down at the bottom, you can GCCSJ to 77977. But if you have to run, you can't make it tonight, serve at 408-389-8338. Let's just all team up together. Can you believe and see a church here? Where we're all connected, we're all serving, we're all doing our part because God's got a part for everybody. In Jesus' name. Ushers are waiting upon the people. Let's worship. You mend the broken heart. You wipe away every tear. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. Can you wipe away? Wipe away. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. Jesus, you said you came in your light in darkness, and you said for us to let our light shine as well. And Lord, we just speak a blessing over everybody here, over the children, over the youth, everybody in this facility, Lord, that your grace may rest upon us. That, Lord God, we can be a connected people. We can be a serving people. We can be a giving people. So I speak in the authority of Jesus Christ, that your spirit, Lord God, would rest upon everybody here. Whatever need will be met, you meet it. We speak a blessing over this week to come.
Lord, tomorrow's going to be a great day. Tuesday's going to be better. Wednesday is going to be awesome. Come on, Jesus. And we just know that there's great things you're going to do. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen, amen. Listen, our prayer teams are going to be up in the front. Stop by the counters out there. Get information about Team Gateway. See you tonight. Root Beer Floats, 6 o'clock. Over here in the cafe, Pastor Albert and Jenny will be up at the front here for the prayer team sign up. Otherwise, God bless you, Gateway. We'll see you.